I'm interested in the outcome, not in the process. So if they want to change the algorithm, they can do that. Welcome back to Northern Perspective, everyone. I'm Cypher. And I'm Fox. This past Friday, the CRTC announced their latest update regarding the implementation of Bill C-11, the Online Streaming Act, or as we all call it, the Online Censorship Act. Before we get to that, help us keep this channel growing strong by hitting that like button to push this out to more viewers and subscribe to the channel so you're notified of our next episode. If you would like to support the channel, check out the description of this video for more details. Now, to make sure we weren't imagining things, we decided to revisit an interview that CPAC's Michael Serapio did with the MP originally responsible for this bill, Pablo Rodriguez. Let's get into it. We're now joined by the Minister for Canadian Heritage, Pablo Rodriguez. Minister, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Listen, I want to begin here uh, with a headline, and this is actually from the Globe and Mail yesterday. I'm going to read the headline to you. It says uh, about C-11's passage, mm -hmm. crowd displeaser. As Online Streaming Act becomes law, just about everyone is unhappy. Uh, I want to begin with that because I, I was wondering what, what your reaction is to it. Here you are spending all this time to get C-11 passed. It is now passed. It's now received royal assent. But still more suspicion than praise for the law. What's your reaction to that? Well, that's one paper, one opinion. I disagree with, with what's said there because, I've, I mean, if you look at the article across the country, there's huge support for this for this bill, because the, the Broadcasting Act has not been amended since 1991. Many governments tried it before, but never since 1991. 1991, we were not going on the internet. We would listen music on our Walkmans, you know, the little yellow box, and we would go to Blockbuster to rent movies. So I think it's a huge achievement, and people from the music, television, uh, mu movie sector are, are very happy. The people from the news and the movies and the television sectors are very happy. Yeah, I bet they are. Then the rest of us aren't. That's the thing. The vast majority of people are not happy with this. Nobody asked for this. Well, let me clarify that. Nobody outside of the media producers that were getting absolutely trashed by all of the independent creators asked for this. Well, and that's the thing. It costs a lot of money to make movies, n music, news, and people are finding that they would rather watch amateurs like us just talk about these things or, um, you know, watch them play with puppies or, you know, learn how to cook from these people instead of watching a fancy cooking show. And these big creators have these huge bills still to produce their content, but they're not getting the revenue they were before because of people like us. Well... And look at why. Look at the stuff that they're producing. They're producing things with the message. They're producing essentially propaganda. And when they're not producing that, they're recycling old material that is not original. And they're trying to make it modernized for modern audiences. Yeah, instead of writing new characters, they're just taking a franchise that you know, was maybe popular when we were kids and then they're gutting it and putting, you know, all these SJW messages into it and then releasing it out into the public and wondering why people don't like to watch it. Yeah, nobody likes it. Nobody likes it. Why did everybody go and see Barbie? Because that had never been done before. Because Margot Robbie's pretty. Like, you can argue <laughs> on the merits of the movie, but it was something different. Why did everyone go and see Oppenheimer? Because it was something different. Because Killian Murphy's awesome. So, like, no, most people do not want this. They absolutely do not. Uh, and so, and that's true. Like, we, we are hearing praise from more traditional media, like TV, like film, like screenwriters. But when you talk about new media, like TikTok and YouTube, they're not happy about this, nor are their content generators. What do you say to that criticism? Well, th this bill is, is very simple. Sometimes you see things that are not there. The bill is asking two things, right, to the streamers. It's asking Disney, Netflix, and those streamers that we love, uh, you know, the Prime and others, to, c to contribute 
to gain culture. That's the first thing. The second thing, we're asking them to showcase more of, of who we are, what we are, our stories. Our, a little bit more of our music, maybe on Spotify. A little bit more of our television and movies on the other, on the other streamers. That's, that's it. That's all we're asking. Uh, some people things are, see things that are not on the bill, but it is what it is. Some people see things that are not in the bill, but it is what it is. So you heard it from them. So they're targeting Netflix. They're targeting Disney. They're targeting Spotify. They're targeting Amazon Prime and YouTube because they distribute movies. They stream movies. Well, and this was why I was so flippant yesterday in the live stream when we were asked this question, because everything that we have read and heard up until this point was that it's for streamers, like not people like us, but people like YouTube and Spotify and TikTok, like the big guys that they're going to be required to push out Canadian content. And that could affect us either way. It could affect us by putting us to the top of the list because obviously we are Canadian content. We're two Canadians talking about Canadian stuff. Um, or it could be to our detriment because it could push us out to the wrong audience and then it would screw up the algorithm and, and show YouTube that people are not interested in our content. And it would be kind of incorrect to push us out to those people in the first place, if that makes sense. So that's why I was kind of dismissive of it yesterday, because it could work in our favor and it could not work in our favor. Well, I guess part of the fear here is, and this is really more with new media, because uh, as you know, algorithms determine so much of what we see online. It, it gives us not only what we're looking for, but it is also uh, suggesting uh, other media other files within uh, within an environment that you might be interested in and i guess the concern is if the algorithm is based ge uh, with geography therefore bring more canadian content to canadian users if other countries followed suit, it might limit uh, Canadian content drivers and creators to, to actually go beyond our, our country. Those, uh, the, those algorithms might, for example, disadvantage Canadians outside of the Canadian environment. What do you say to that? Uh, that's if YouTube decides to do that. I mean, would the, the, the only person, the only people that control YouTube algorithms are the YouTube people. I don't know why they would, they would do that. Um, but. But I guess if you're trying to feature more Canadian content on it, if they yeah. change their algorithms to feature more Canadian content based on the geography of the user. To. They don't have to. It's a decision. I'm interested in the outcome, not in the process. So if they want to change their algorithm, they can do that. But they don't have to. It's not in the bill, and no one can force them to do that. But they can also uh, put more Canadian content on their web page. They can be creative and buy advertising by the side of their own and say, hey, this great new Canadian movie is out. Go watch it. They, they decide on how they do it. I want to see more game content. The process is up to them. In the words of Stephen Harper. He has no idea what he is talking about. Oh, that's evident. This, this guy, this guy is completely clueless. And it just, it, 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 it boils my blood to just listen to him. So Michael Serapio is asking a very pointed and very reasonable question. So Pablo if YouTube is forced to change the algorithm to put more Canadian content up there, ergo, from a geographic perspective, that's how you're going to show Canadians Canadian content. YouTube ha has to know who they are and where they are. Okay, number one. And what if other com countries follow suit? What if the US said, you know what? Limit, eliminate all of the other countries' content out there, focus on the United States content. So any of the content that the Canadians generate, it's going to be completely gone. Right? So that's the question to, to Pablo. And he said, well, they don't have to do that. I just want to see more Canadian content. Like, what? No, they could put it, you know, YouTube could put it on their front page. How do you think you get to the front page of YouTube? And then he, and then he said, oh, well, you know, YouTube could choose to pay for advertising <laughs> to advertise a Canadian movie. Are you kidding? Are you kidding, Pablo? You either are the worst liar, which is probably it, or you have no idea what you're talking about, which is also probably it. Two things can be true. Like, this is, this is absolutely ridiculous what he's saying. He's saying, I want to see only Canadian content on YouTube, but um, they don't have to change the algorithm to make that happen. Yes, they do. Yes, they absolutely do. And how it would work is this is YouTube would say, what IP are you connecting from? 
Oh, you're connecting from IP 123.123.123.123. That's in Montreal. You're a Canadian. So therefore, you're getting this version of the algorithm, which is going to present you more Canadian content because that's what your law requires. There's no other way to do it. And for him to say, I don't care about the process, I just want the outcome. That's scary, everybody. Mm -hmm. Now, there was also a concern that this might actually have overreach and in affect the individual uh, content creators, uh, user-generated content that, that are posted onto these kind of websites. But you don't think that's going to be an issue here? No. Even though the Senate wanted to pass an amendment that would actually make a distinction, say it would not apply uh, to them. But that amendment had a loophole in it. But think about it. First, I say we're not interested in looking at the, the content of creators. I mean, even if it's great, we're among the best in the world, but it's not what we're looking for. But even if we were, how do we do that? Did you ask the questions to these people? How would we do that? There's millions and millions of things uploaded on the internet every day. Who would be watching that? Someone at the government, the CRTC? It's impossible. So not only are we not interested in watching and passing comments on the content, there's no way we could do it anyways. There's no way we could do it anyways. Well, you heard it here first, folks. Yeah, tell me you don't know what you're talking about without telling me that you don't know what you're talking about. So this is what we heard from Pablo. We've also heard it from other liberal MPs. This is only focused on Disney. This is only focused on Netflix. This is only focused on Prime. It's only focused on Spotify. And it's only focused on YouTube insofar as it's broadcasting movies and TV shows that you watch, right? Okay, so I guess none of this is true. Yeah, so Elon launched an attack at Trudeau on, on Friday. Toronto Sun and Brian Lilly wasn't having it. And, uh, and even the CBC admitted it on their front page. CRTC is now targeting creators. Like us. So let's take a look at that, shall we? September 29th, 2023. This is on the Canadian government website, Canada.ca. Today, the CRTC is advancing its regulatory plan to modernize Canada's broadcasting framework and ensure online streaming services making, make meaningful contributions to Canadian and Indigenous content. On May 12, 2023, the CRTC launched its first public consultations. After thoroughly examining all of the evidence on public record, including over 200 interventions, which it rejected, the CRTC is issuing its first two decisions. First, the CRTC is setting out which online streaming services need to provide information about their activities in Canada. Online streaming services that operate in Canada offer broadcasting content and earn $10 million or more in annual revenues will need to complete a registration form by November 28th, 2023. Registration collects basic information is only required once and can be completed in just a few steps. Okay, sounds fine. Second, the CRTC is setting conditions for online streaming services to operate in Canada. These conditions take effect today and require certain online streaming services to provide the CRTC with information related to their content and subscribership. The decision also requires those services to make content available in a way that is not tied to a specific mobile or internet device. A third consultation is ongoing. It considers contributions traditional broadcasters and online streaming services will need to make to support Canadian and Indigenous content. The CRTC will hold a three-week public proceeding starting on November 20th, 2023, and we'll hear from 129 interveners representing a broad range of interests. So, that first part. So what they're doing is they're saying... Any of the online streamers that offer broadcasting content and earn at least $10 million or more, they have to complete a registration form and submit it to the CRTC by November 28th of this year. And the second one, they're saying the CRTC is setting up conditions for those streaming services to operate in Canada. What are they? Guess what? They're not in the law. This is what everyone has been screaming about because none of this stuff is in the law. The law just says you have to do what the CRTC says. 
and the CRTC isn't isn't bound by that. So if the CRTZ makes a major change, that doesn't have to go to Parliament. That doesn't get voted on. The CRTC can do what they want. This is what everyone's complaining about. Quick facts. This is what got everybody up in arms on, on uh, Friday. Social media services must register. However, users do not. Online services that offer podcasts must register. Why? Why? Because they don't want us talking trash about the liberals, that's why. No, Pablo said they're not interested in, in the user content. It would be impossible to regulate it. It would be impossible for the government to do that. Oh, you mean how it's impossible for YouTube to catch our curse words and stuff when, uh, whenever we do it? Yeah, uh, <laughs> apparently we're imagining all of that. Online services that provide only video game services or audiobooks do not have to register. Why? That's content, especially the audiobooks. Why, why don't you, why aren't you looking to promote more Canadian audiobooks to people? It's a mystery. A list of registered services will be published on the CRTC's website. Now, one thing I want to make sure everyone is absolutely clear on this. Some of the alarmists out there that are reacting to this are perpetuating some falsehoods out there. It may be by accident. Maybe they don't understand this, or maybe they're doing it to get clicks. I don't know. Some people out there are stating that this will end up having a list of every single podcast that is on YouTube and on Spotify, and it will be on the CRTC. That is blatantly incorrect. At this point in the game, anyways. At this point. That is incorrect. From what we have in front of us, that is not what they're asking for. What they are asking for is the the organizations that act as a broadcaster or an online streaming service that make more than 10 million dollars in revenue so let's say you're the joe rogan podcast i don't know if he makes more than 10 million dollars in revenue or not but let's say he only streams from his site his website and he makes 10 million dollars or more and he wanted to broadcast in canada he would have to register because he's his own broadcaster. If he only broadcasts on Twitch, if he only broadcasts on YouTube, if he only broadcasts on Twitter, he doesn't have to register. Why? Because the organizations that stream his stuff make more than $10 million a year and they have to register. So I want to make sure that's very clear. I also want to make sure that something else is very clear. Um, the CRTC seems to have as much understanding about the internet as Pablo Rodriguez because they were kind enough to put this website together where they're discussing the myths of Bill C-11 and the facts of, of, of Bill C-11. So let's take a look at some of them. Myth. The CRTC will regulate content and digital creators. Fact, we will only regulate broadcasters, including providers of both traditional broadcasting services and online streaming services. This is where they have no idea what they're doing. That's like saying, we are going to regulate the roads, but not the drivers. We're gonna put in all of the rules for the roads, but we're not interested in the drivers. Guys, when you put in rules for the roads, who has to comply with those? The drivers. So when you put in rules for the broadcasters and the streamers, like the ones that have podcasts like ours, who do you think has to comply? It's the creators. And ladies and gentlemen, this is their first point. Now, when you're talking about public opinion, the rule of thumb is lead with your strongest point. So this is their strongest point and they don't even understand it. This is the part that's just unbelievable to me. Myth number two, the CRTC will regulate social media users and user content. Fact, we will only regulate broadcasters. Broad <laughs> they're, they're saying almost the exact same thing. 
We will only regulate broadcasters, broadcasting services, and online streaming services that make programming available to the public. How are you going to do that? How are you going to know which YouTubers are Canadian and Canadian content and which ones are not? You have to regulate them in some way. Everyone is a potential broadcaster. This is what they don't understand. Everyone. Anyone who is a TikTok user, anyone who's a YouTube user, anyone who's on Facebook, anyone who is on Twitter, everyone is a potential broadcaster. So yes, everyone would be subject to these rules. And this is why Michael Serapio was saying to Pablo, um, there is an amendment proposed by the Senate that would specifically exclude, exclude social media users and content creators from this. But you rejected that. And he's like, oh, no, there's a loophole. No, you wanted your, your loophole. Next myth. CRTC will censor what you watch, read, or listen to online. Fact. What is available online will not change. We will not censor the content Canadians listen to and watch online. No, you won't censor it. You won't block it. But, but if a tree falls in the woods and no one's around to hear it, doesn't make a sound, right? That's the point. If... Cypher and I produce content all day long and it's not being pushed out to anybody. Does it really exist? Does anyone even notice? No. Because how would you? To Fox's point, if, if the platforms are not pushing our content based on interest instead of based on geographical region and based on the CRTC's definition of what Canadian content is, then no one's going to see it. This is why creators have been jumping up and down and sounding the alarm. Myth. The CRTC will regulate algorithms of online st streaming services. Fact. We will not regulate algorithms. We want to encourage innovation to make Canadian and Indigenous content easier to find. How do you think that's going to happen? Magic. And this is the, the, this is the BS. The BS wording that they're using. Because are they going to regulate the algorithms? No. What they're going to do is set out regulations that says you have to make this happen. And then YouTube or Facebook or X are all going to have to regulate their own algorithms. To comply. There's no other way to do that. Like, this is just ridiculous. Myth. The CRTC will regulate the prices of online streaming services. Fact. Com companies will continue to sell their services using their own business models and plans. Really? Then why is C18 here? Like, this is, th this is just beyond gaslighting at this point, everybody. This, this is not a fact. The government is actively trying to force Facebook and YouTube into... New business models. And then, you know, if talks fail with Google, who's to say they're not going to go after X next or, or TikTok or, or who knows? Like there is no, there's no wording in Bill C-18 that really defines who they can stop at. Like they can just keep going and going and going. Like this is what everyone is concerned about. Now, there's one more snippet that we want to show you from that interview. But it does, for example, apply to, as you just said, uh, streamers like Disney+, Plus, like Netflix, mm -hmm. uh, Apple, uh, uh, as well as Prime. Uh, are you willing to expand the definition of what qualifies as Canadian content in order to satisfy the, 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 the intent of this, bit, well, this law? The next step, now that the, the, the bill became law, is, is for me to, to draft uh, a, a policy directive to the CRTC, and in, in that directive, I will ask the CRTC to look at the actual definition of game content and to modernize it, so we'll see what we, they come up to. But a lot of things are very important, for example, the, the, the IP, the, 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 the fact that we need to hire more uh, Canadian people, being actors, directors, technicians. Uh, we want to help our industry, and this is what this, this bill is doing. Mm -hmm. and now, at the end of the day, when you say that your hope is, or when you write that directive to the CRTC, that modernizing Canadian content and those regulations will be a part of it. So what are you looking for? What, what is your hope uh, as you consider that document that you send over to the CRTC? 
Well, that document is to is to explain a little bit to the RTC how some things should be interpreted or asking them to do certain things. For example, again, modernizing the RTC. I'll be more specific, saying that also that this excludes user-generated content. This excludes user-generated content. User-generated content. So what are we going to do about this? Well, I sat down this evening and I wrote a few letters to some MPs that I thought would be key in helping us fight this Bill C-11. And I sent them the emails tonight and I'm going to mail off the snail mails tomorrow. Uh, so that's one thing. What you guys can do is also write your MP and let them know how you feel about Bill C-11 in your own words. And the last thing that you can do to stay up to date with Northern Perspective is make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you know when every single video drops so that you're able to see all of our content even if we get blindsided by this bill. And as you heard in that last clip, Paulo Rodriguez said he was going to draft his directive to the CRTC and he was going to instruct them what to do and to to redefine Canadian content and that they weren't going to touch any creator type of content. So I just have one thing to say to you, Pablo. Liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs>